Wojo's Greenhouse, celebrating 31 years, growing to serve you better. Selling beautiful and healthy plants, including annuals, vegetables, perennials, trees and shrubs, and plant care products. Plant your dreams from our greenhouse to your home. Three locations to serve you in Ortonville, Davison, and Lake Orion. Welcome to another edition of Oxford Television's Way of Exploring Our School System. We call it Schooling Around. Last time we focused on International Baccalaureate in the primary years, the PYP. We saw how the kids focused on their fifth grade exhibition as they worked in teams. Today we look at the second phase of the International Baccalaureate program called the Middle Years Program or MYP. This part goes from the sixth through the tenth grades. We spent a day at our middle school and high school observing classes and talking with teachers. Teacher Molly Darnell is the coordinator of the MYP for the Oxford School District. She talks more about it. Again, the middle years, I should say, the middle years program runs from sixth grade through 10th grade. Um, so in sixth grade and every year following, they are in, or for the next three, they are in all eight subject areas. Once they reach the high school in ninth and 10th grade, they will choose um, six of those eight. And then because we have seven periods at the high school, they can have elective of choice. So the requirements of IB is that they are in the four core, and then what we call, we've implemented the fifth core in Oxford. And that marries quite nicely with IB because IB does require one language from sixth grade through 10th grade. And here in Oxford, we have Chinese and Spanish. Um, IB itself is an outcomes-based so it is still quite challenging. It's still working at the highest level of blooms. It's still asking you to um, take and apply and synthesize, um, to teach in some respects. So the highest application of what a child can do with that. It's not just kicking back knowledge. I think the other really big benefit that all students can benefit from through the IB program is that um, community action service component that we have. So. It's not just about academics, it's really about the development of the whole child. And if you look at the IB model, um, at the very center of that is the child, because we always have to remember what are the child's developmental needs um, throughout the years, which is why the program goes through 10th grade. So we have a learner profile, which is 10 traits in which we want all kids to become. And I think that we can all say that those are things that we value. We want our kids to be good communicators. We want them to be um, risk takers. We want them to um, be thinkers. But when we actually highlight, do, are you aware that that's what you're doing? Or how are you being a positive risk taker today? Mm -hmm. so, so for some, that is taking the leap and trying something a little bit outside of their comfort zone in the classroom, which might be um, up, getting up and giving a speech which is not comfortable for a lot of people. So um, we can take all of the things that kids are doing and highlight why um, their values and positive contributions to who they will become. Is They start with what are called transdisciplinary themes, and those transdisciplinary themes are called approaches to learning at, in the middle years program. And those are um, how do our students what is the information literacy skills our kids should have and as a sixth grader, as an eighth grader, as a tenth grader? How, do, how should our kids communicate and work together in groups as a sixth grader, seventh grader, eighth grader, ninth grader, tenth grader? So they really break down those same skills that the kids have been building or started in the elementary school and continue to build on them. Um, so how do we continue that? I would say in the middle years program, it's much more, um, there's a little bit more rigor to it. So where they really focus on, I mean our common core or our state standards are what drive our curriculum. The IB has in the elementary level the transdisciplinary themes, which are the skills. And while we still continue to build on those skills, we also have a common core or state standards that we have to adhere to. IB has their own specific rubrics and we look at, we still continue to holistically look at the child, 
but in the Middle Years program we holistically assess the child. So it's their ability to do a given task as a whole and not parts of the whole. So if you remember back to rubrics and how they used to be this point, this point, this point, and this point, and you could still get a zero on, say, uh, the Works Cited page and still end up with a pretty good grade without ever giving credit to whoever you were citing. Now, as being, a res as being responsible, which is part of that learner profile, um, and you look at those rubrics, if you do not have that Works Cited page in there, you will never mit your, mit get to your high marks. That also aligns to our academic honesty policy in the district, in which someone has worked hard and you need to give them credit for the work they do so it's about recognizing and understanding knowledge and how it's transferred and um, who and um, and giving credit to the research that was done and the hard work that other individuals have done now for my benefit and mm -hmm. some of our viewers please tell me what rubrics is okay <laughs> so rubrics is uh, the method of scoring uh, typically a larger assessment um, it's basically the expectation that the student must adhere to. And kind of the rules of the game. The rules of the game, and it, depending upon um, how you score in that rubric, will determine your grade at the end. The teacher should be consistently checking. Um, you know, I know that you're here, let's try to push it to here. And one of the things that I do like a lot about the Ivy rubrics is you, you may be here at the beginning. Um, but that doesn't mean at the end, when we give your IB grade, IB doesn't believe in averages. So they want the most recent and consistent score that you produce. Because if I had a zero at the beginning of the semester, or if I had an E at the beginning of the semester on something that's quite large, and by the end I showed evidence of knowledge in that area, why should I be punished for having not known the knowledge on September So 13th. what you care about is progress. What we care about is progress. We care about at the, we, and of course, at every there has to be a time in which you say this is where a child scores. This is your ability level at this point in time. And those are our marking periods. Mm -hmm. And so um, Ivy looks at the full year of progress. At the end of that year, where are they at? And that's when an Ivy grade is distributed. Now, with the grade school kids, you had the fifth grade exhibition. Mm -hmm. What is the concluding event for the middle school? Um, that is the personal project and actually our current 8th grade class will be the first to um, experience the personal project. So we started this about three years ago. We were just authorized in November. So making sure that those kids, we started I should say the implementation process about three years ago, but making sure that those kids have worked up through the program and we've lo we've learned and we've grown as teachers. I mean this was a lear you know, learning curve for a lot of us as well. Um, but so our current 8th grade class will be the first ones. The personal project is very similar to the exhibition project, only it's an individual project. Um, and it's of a choice. It's any topic that they want to choose. Um, it's researched. Uh, there is um, a progress journal in which you kind of take a look at how do I learn best and what are my what are my learning strengths and what are my weaknesses. The thing that I really, really, really like about that personal project is the ability for the student to identify what are my strengths and weaknesses as a student, as a learner, and as a producer. Um, so it's very self-reflective which is another component to IB, that yeah. reflection upon learning. We'll visit our first class after this. Christy Watson teaches a technology class, otherwise known as Project Lead the Way. Which is, um, Everybody yeah. has the exact same goal levels. Those have been the same the entire time. The basic arm. Okay, so sketch that out for me. I want to see what your arm looks like. You have to build the arm. So the electromagnet's going to be where on the arm? 
top. Okay? Yes. So that is going to do nothing for the electromagnet. That's going to only maybe move it and spin it. Right. Right. So you want an arm kind of I don't know. Is that the best solution? Yeah, so we have one design. Oh, all through that. One one design that involves some photos, some photo solid. We spoke with Mrs. Watson about her class and the expectations. Because we teach a class that is based on real world experiences, it lends perfectly with IB. So doing these IB summatives goes along with the PLTW curriculum, so they follow in line perfectly. Like, I mean, what we're doing here and all of the units that we build upon, um, they align with the design process with what IB has. Was it hard for you as a person and a teacher to get your mind around these changes? Or did it just seem like this was really the natural thing to do? This was the natural thing to do, but I taught a computer applications class, and again, we used a lot of real-world experience with that as well. So you're an old hand at this. Yeah. Well, oh, oh well, yeah, uh, not old. Thanks, thanks. Yes. <laughs> when we return, we'll look at the impact of IB on language arts. Hi everybody, I'm Terry Stiles. Hi everybody, I'm Bill Service and I'm the producer of our community access. Terry and I started our show eight years ago to bring our community into your living rooms. Our community access is a show born from the rich diversity of our community and we want to brag about it and the people creating that diversity. Over the year we've been from fox hunts to beekeeping and right in your own backyard. <laughs> we welcome new businesses, chamber fashion, senior hobbies, class reunions and much much more. We've covered all our celebrations from Leonard Strawberry Festival to our premier Lone Ranger Parade. But there's still more avenues that we plan on going on. So watch our community access at 9 30 and 5 30 every day and you have a great great week. You're watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television, serving Oxford, Addison Township, and the village of Leonard. Stacy Blaskowski is an English teacher. We asked her about the impact of IB on her class. It's given me a central focus. Um, when I started teaching 14 years ago, um, it seemed like there was a worksheet for everything. Um, you could uh, go in any teacher's classroom and everybody was assigning worksheets and study guides. Uh, now, it's given me a focus um, where my units have something that they wrap around. Um, when I plan lessons, there's a specific goal and at the end of the class, everything wraps around that goal and the students at the end before they leave they can let the teacher know exactly what it is that they're understanding and then I can move forward from there. So for me, IB in this program has changed my teaching immensely and it's allowed me to kind of look at and evaluate what I really want the kids to know and where at the end of the day I want them to go. As you might expect, Science class has been impacted greatly by IB. Andrew McDonald is a middle school science teacher. He explains. Okay, well, I started here four years ago, and it was the beginning of the MYP program for Oxford So you came schools. in at an interesting time. Yeah, I did. There was a lot of change. Uh, I had just finished my student teaching. I actually did that in Utica schools. Uh, so I got to see a totally different philosophy. Uh, I would say, I was on, you know, we got to really drive the curriculum towards the MYP process. So, uh, you know, we've always, you know, in science we've always tried to develop the critical thinking skills, you know, pre preparing students for the future. Mm -hmm. And so IB comes along and the first thing I sit through is, you know, principles in a practice and the first document talks about, you know, the science. They have different science guides and they call it the MYP science guide. And I open it up and I look at it and it talks about how, you know, developing these critical thinking skills from, and also taking into a global perspective. So I got to see that four years ago and say, wow, this is something I really like. You know, I, I believe, you know, I've lived in Michigan my whole life. I've seen, you know, I'm old enough to remember the auto industry dominating, where I could walk off, you know, at 18, I had friends from high school that said, hey, I'm going to the auto line. 
And my parents always said, hey, you've got to do something. The world's competitive. Right. And that was over 20 years ago. And that's what I like about the IB program is it's training our students. It's getting them ready for that global, real-world thinking skills that they're going to need as a science. You know, if they go into science, if they go into humanities, but you know, whatever their interest is. Right. Creative thinking is really what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, and that's what I really tell the parents on curriculum night, the first night I really tell them, I go, my job as a science educator is to get your you know, student ready for those critical thinking skills. In sixth grade, that's what we're really starting to prepare them for. Uh, and our curriculum really does a lot of reflection. So we have a lot of writing that's involved in the curriculum. And we align that to the, we call them uh, criterions for IB. There's different criterions for science. And, you know, those writing skills come in handy, not just in science class, but they do a lot of writing in language arts. They do a lot of writing in humanities, and they've even started to do writing in math. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any team projects uh, in your class? Yeah, like group collaborative projects. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, this one we're actually starting. You'll see in my class today. Uh, we're starting the ecosystem threat project. Mm -hmm. So students will work. Uh, we started actually tomorrow, but they'll work in groups, partnering up and collaborating on what's an ecosystem threat they believe that's happening in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And there's five different factors that we'll talk about in class today about mm -hmm. these threats. And those collaboration skills, uh, that's part of, you know, there's different parts of the IB learner profile. And we talk about the students being communicators. You know, sometimes they'll say, you know what, this student's a risk taker. You know, this, you'll see them posted in all of our classes. And it really goes along with the philosophy of developing that lifelong learner. And group work is so important. Uh, I have a lot of students or dads working in the auto industry still. They're engineers, computer engineers, and they come in and, you know, occasionally we have guest speakers, and they really like that we work in group projects because they say, you know, at Chrysler, for example, they sit down at a table of this size and they're like, hey, we need to work in a group. You know, you're going to design the transmission but you have to lead the project. And through the group projects, it's a different form of assessment. We can really see how different learners relate to maybe a group project, but we also give them an ability to write up their responses. You know, so we try to assess them in different ways. Back after this. Even physical education has been impacted. Sports like archery are now available to our kids. Orchestra director Nadi Benjamin admits that the international roots of music has kept that area pretty steady. So, but, but in, in the same way, it was reinforcing what we're doing now, like why do we, why do, we do what we do? And IB was more of um, a, a reinstatement of what we do every day in class and even making it more clear to the students that they understand this is what it means, this is why we do, uh, we, we play together, this is why we fix errors, this is why we need to understand about the culture and the history of the, of the music. This is why we work in sectionals in order to collaborate together for a, a concert or for festival uh, and so on and so forth. Now the middle school has been gearing up for IB for two or three years now. Has that affected the orchestra program? Oh, of course, yeah. Of course. We, we, I mean, what was great about IB as we were doing it, that it was district-wide. It was all a big collaborative um, um, initiative for the district and um, what we, we also had to prepare just like everybody else as far as aligning our standards and curriculum into the International Baccalaureate and sometimes it was um, 
uh, a little challenging to find the right terms and, ling uh, and, and lingos to make it fit for us, but um, once we did, it just made perfect sense for the students and for us as the teachers as well, too. The middle year IB program includes the early high school years as well. The study of second languages is important. Fan Li teaches fourth year Chinese. She tells us about the IB impact there. A, because IB program is more looking at performance, so how the students use, apply the stuff or knowledge that they use, they learn in class. And in Chinese, more like how they um, use Chinese in writing, listening, speaking, and mm -hmm. uh, reading. So, so it's more like the for teaching and uh, I more like doing the authentic materials more often. And also, and like pushing them up more to apply the language in a reality, you know, like, like authentic situation. We'll talk about language arts and math when we return. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm Stephanie. And we're from the Oxford Yoga Studio in downtown Oxford. We're a new studio and we're opening up in the, at the end of April this month. So come check us out. We're also doing Rise and Shine Yoga that is on every morning at 8.30. So if you get a chance, want to do some yoga, come on down. And we'll see you hopefully at the end of April. Looking forward to it. Crystal Corbett is a language arts teacher. She explains the IB impact there. I have a more inquiry-based approach. Before, and, and I think that's a shift in education in general, not just with IB, um, and other training that I've had through the RAISE program that Molly mentioned earlier, I can tell you more about that. But um, it, there's a more inquiry-based approach. So rather than just lecturing, which I still do some lecturing, we pose a question and as a group try to find the answer or solution or see what other questions arise. There's reform happening in education and, I, and, and um, one of the main shifts are from teacher center to more teacher as facilitator. Mm -hmm. And um, another training that I attended that's very similar or maybe compatible with IB, also inquiry based, is called RAISE. And it's reading apprenticeship in secondary education. Math teacher Joe Amaboli says IB has put the Y into mathematics. Being able to um, take a you know a situation and apply an overall understanding to it, you know, um, it's no longer just here's an equation. Let's plug in the numbers and get an answer. You got to understand what the equation is. You know, at, the whys are very important. You know, asking why is a lot more important, I think, with the IB uh, curriculum than just uh, you know pre-IB stuff. And, and group effort seems to be group a big effort part is big. Too. Communicating it. Being able to justify, not just explaining your answer, being able to, you know, why did you, get, let's say a student got, you know, five feet as an answer, justifying why it's five feet, why does it make sense instead of just, this is how I got it, you know, why, you know, and it's, it builds confidence, you know, it builds, uh, if they don't understand, they know right away they don't understand, you know what I mean? Sure. Uh, they have to was it hard for you to get used to all this or was it a logical step? It, it took about a day of um, just explaining what the expectations were and a lot of helping the students struggle for, you know, effort, because it's a big jump, mm -hmm. you know, but I think a lot of them appreciate it more, you know, how does a student feel at the end of a multiple choice test in terms of validation of his learning, you know, not very, not very, I mean, so what, you know, but at the end of a project like this, you know, getting to the end and actually understanding it, I think there's some growth. With some final thoughts, Ken Weaver, principal of Oxford Middle School. I think a lot of the IB philosophy is just best practice teaching or supported by best practice research. Um, I think it makes us a better school. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about IB. 
um, especially at the MYP level, it is not a curriculum. It is just a teaching philosophy um, and looking at the whole child and looking at their development and realizing that, especially in the middle years, they need a lot of well-rounded uh, experiences to contribute to their education. Um, through IB, we've been able to better articulate our curriculum, our assessments, uh, everything has become more in focus for us, um, as well as it's kind of given us that um, backbone or support for our professional development so that we could have those conversations across grade levels, across subjects, um, and really get to know what each other's teaching. Um, and it's just been really a fabulous experience, I think, for our staff and for our students. Has this been a tough sell as far as the community is concerned? Um, at times, it, I think it has. Um, I think most of the people, once they've uh, delved into the, the IB program and looked at some of the philosophies and looked at what it really is about, I think once they, they do that, they're okay with it. And they realize that, um, you know what, we're still teaching um, curriculum that is, is approved by the state of Michigan, um, that there isn't any agendas, that it's basically just trying to get the children um, as best prepared to complete, uh, to compete globally um, in today's market and getting them the best education that they can. Um, things have changed. Things have changed from when I graduated. Um, it was more about just the state, about competing in Michigan. Um, then as, as over time you see an emphasis to being able to compete nationally. Now it's about competing internationally for jobs, um, for factories, um, trying to be the best that you can and it no longer is just about what is happening here in Michigan in the car industry. In the Oxford School District, here at in the middle school, what work is yet to be done as far as IB goes? Well. We are part of the way there, as I, as I had said earlier with the authorization, because when we had our visit, it was like, where are you at at this point in, in time? Um, it is not completed. We have to complete uh, all of the IB units and all the IB assessments. It's really about just completing the process at this point. We have a good understanding of what the philosophy is, a good understanding of how to approach the curriculum. Now it's about putting it in place. It's about doing it on a more consistent basis, on a daily basis, and that almost all of our units then will become IB units. That's really where we're at. We also have to finish off the personal project in 10th grade. That is going to be a huge undertaking and after watching my daughter go through the fifth grade exhibition project which is somewhat along the lines of the 10th grade personal project it is really uh, an amazing program uh, the, my daughter learned a tremendous amount it really pushed her um, and pushed her in a lot of areas that sometimes kids aren't allowed to develop um, in school always um, she had to work with other individuals they had to do a presentation she developed a web page I mean there was just so many different facets to the to the exhibition project that allowed her to develop and allowed her to grow as a learner that I'm really excited to be able to give that opportunity to the 10th graders as well too. What kind of extra training did the teachers have to go through to adapt to the IB program? We sent a lot of our teachers off um, to trainings or professional development at different locations around the country. Unfortunately, Michigan didn't really offer any of the trainings at this time. It was just lately within the last year has come into being that Michigan has more IB conferences and you have to go to IB certified conferences and you would go there and you would learn how to write unit planners, how to do uh, assessments according to the IB um, method. Um, and the teachers would go there and get good professional development. They'd be there two, three, four days, depending on how long the, the training was set up, pretty intense. Um, and they would go learn with other IB teachers, um, all at the table, kind of sharing ideas and different approaches to, to getting the task done. Okay. Oxford Middle School Principal Ken Weaver. Next time, we look at the final phase of International Baccalaureate, the Diploma Program. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Ochins for Oxford Community Television, keeping it local.
Wojo's Greenhouse, celebrating 31 years, growing to serve you better. Selling beautiful and healthy plants, including annuals, vegetables, perennials, trees and shrubs, and plant care products. Plant your dreams from our greenhouse to your home. Three locations to serve you in Ortonville, Davison, and Lake Orion.